Hello, welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen, as you can read, in fact, in the grid, we have another puzzle from the Phenom from Hong Kong, Under Beyond. Um, this puzzle was published on Logic Masters Germany a few days ago. It has a 100% approval rating, which is a rare thing indeed. And it's also rated five stars out of five. So it might be quite tricky. This might be a long video. Um, but anyway, I am very, very much looking forward to having a go at it. Um, now, I need to update you on our Sudoku puzzle hunt, which was released yesterday at three o'clock in the afternoon UK time. Um, and we've we've been overwhelmed by the feedback. It has been absolutely brilliant. Um, and we actually have, uh, well, let me tell you what happened. Four hours, 17 minutes um, into the puzzle hunt, um, we had an email um, from David Shogren, um, and uh, he was correct with his solution. And within about 10 seconds, we had an email from Eva Hopner with her um, correct solution as well. So we had two correct solutions within 10 seconds of each other, and they were the first finishers in the hunt. So well done, David. Well done, Eva. You were so close to each other that we... Um, we decided it would be fair to award you both a prize. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give um, both of you a piece of merchandise. So well done. Now, since then, we've had about uh, another 60 um, correct solutions. Um, and the feedback has been absolutely stellar. We've been so pleased um, and we're delighted that so many of you seem to have uh, enjoyed it. Um, and I think all we can say is that we agree with those of you who have expressed regret that uh, we never got to see how Harry, Ron and Hermione solved these puzzles in the films. Um, you know, they were great films, but they'd have been even better with Sudoku. Um, now, let me tell you about Under Beyond's puzzle. By the way, of course, if you haven't tried the puzzle hunt yet and you want to have a go, then it's very easy to do that. You just um, click on the link under the video. that will take you to our Patreon page where you can play along. And if you've never heard of Sudoku Puzzle Hunts and wonder what all the fuss is about, you can even have a go at the first puzzle and uh, read all the preamble. Um, now, let me tell you about this one. So we've got normal Sudoku rules applying. Each cage forms a line with a one cell width. So this is very familiar territory for Under Beyond's puzzles. We've seen this in a number of, I think all his other ones, in fact. So you can see if we look at the cages in the grid, they are all exactly one cell wide. And that allows him to introduce the next rule, which is that the number on the top left of a cage um, shows the sum of the numbers sandwiched between the smallest number and the largest number along the line. Um, so it's a little bit difficult, but let's try it. Let's look at this one. Let's imagine that this clue, once we decrypted it, was, um, was 25 then we would know that between the largest and the smallest number, let's imagine that the largest and smallest numbers were in the perimeter, right on the edge of this cage, we would have to put cells, these five cells would have to sum up to 25. Now, of course, it's possible that the biggest and smallest digits are not right at the edges of the cages. They could be somewhere in the middle. So we need to look out for that. Digits cannot repeat in a cage. That's a very important rule. And each digit, as you can see, has been encrypted such that each letter represents a unique digit. So you can see we've got exactly nine letters. Uh, one, each one of these needs to represent exactly one of the numbers from one to nine. Um, the bold letters in cells, you can see across the top and coming slightly down column nine, we've got some bold letters. And basically all this, they're indicating the digit that must appear in that cell in the solution. So if we found out that R was an eight, for example, then this square would have to contain an eight. Um, and what else? Anything else? Oh, yeah. Um, so if we look at these big cages here, you can see they each have sort of a ND, DY, YU um, as their totals. Now, this is not saying Y multiplied by U. This is saying that Y is the tens digit and U is the units digit. So if Y was three and U was five, then this would be 35 clue and we would have to put cells summing to 35 between the smallest and the largest digit in the cage. Um, and that's all there is. So it sounds quite complicated, but I, um, as I say, I'm fairly familiar with Under Beyond's rules now. So uh, I'm, I'm, I think it should be okay. Um, do have a go first. I mean, this guy's puzzles are sensational. And you can play the puzzle by clicking the link under the video. And with that, let's get cracking. Um, and in fact, yeah, in fact, what I'm going to do is I am going to start with these big cages. And the reason for that 
is that I think we can do some basic arithmetic and figure out something about the n, the d, and the y. So what is the absolute maximum we could put uh, as a sandwich filling in a, um, in a Sudoku with these rules? Well, let's imagine we had a nine cell cage. That's the biggest cage we could have. And we could have the one at one end and the nine at the other. And then we could have seven digits sandwiched between them, which would be eight, seven, six, five, four, three, and two. Well, as we know that all of the digits from one to nine, if we sum them, we get 45. If I miss out the one and the nine, then I get 35 as the absolute maximum I could put in the, in the sandwich filling. So that means that N, D, and Y cannot be greater than three. So they must be the digits one, two, and three. And therefore we can, uh, N, D, and Y, we can label all those digits. Look, one, two, and three. Uh, now, can we, we get a triple in this box as a result of that look. And we get nothing obvious. At least nothing obvious to me, I should say. Um, I'm acutely aware when solving these puzzles that when I get stuck, a lot of people are watching me get stuck and it is very disconcerting. So what's, this is a seven cell cage. This one, that one's a seven cell cage. This one is a eight cell cage. All right, so we've got an eight cell cage and two seven cell cages. So it's probable, isn't it, that the eight, the eight will be the three. I don't know if that's forced. If you had a seven cell cage, the maximum number of cells you could have inside the sandwich is five. So if we make those as big as possible, we'd have eight, seven, six, five, and four, which sum to 30. Ah, that is good enough. So they eight, seven, six, five, and four sum to 30. Now, but neither of these totals can be 30. So it's not possible for a seven cell cage to have a three at the start of it because the minimum number it could be is a 31 and that would mean it would need a six cell sandwich. So in fact, the D is the three and we are off and running. Um, that one's a three. There's a three in one of those cells. That's a three. Let's use, um, what I've done is I've obviously added a couple of columns at the edge to allow us to annotate things when, when we get digits placed. That will mean the check function doesn't work, by the way. So it, we always, our check function is a naive check function anyway. It, all, it doesn't check for additional rules. It just checks that each row, column, and three by three box contains the numbers one to nine. But once I start adding columns into the software, it really doesn't like it. So hopefully if I can solve this, you should just compare your solution to my solution. Um, right, we've got a three. D is three. Now we've got a D cage here. Okay, well, it, so this has to have a th this has to have a three as a single cell sandwich filling because you can't put one and two. If I try and put one and two inside the sandwich, the rule set indicates there must be a digit lower than a one bounding this one two pair. Well, there is no digit lower lower than a one. So we can't put one and two in the filling. So the only way of creating a three filling is with the number three. So one of these two squares has got to be a three. Ah, now also, of course, what that means is that there, there must be a lower digit than a three in this cage. So there must be a one or a two in this cage and that's gonna pair up with that. So there's sort of a virtual one, two pair in column two. None of those squares could be a one or a two. don't really see how to use that though. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, that's interesting. Look, we've got R, B and O at the top of columns that contain cages with R, B and O in them. Now that can't be a coincidence. Um, now, what does that mean? What, ah, okay, I know one thing it means. It means that, that these cages 
can't be single cell sandwich fillings because if we make R an eight, now I can't have an eight as the sandwich filling down here because there's already an eight in the column. So whatever we put in here has to be reached with a two cell sum in the cage. I don't quite know how to use that, but that, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start notating. So this, these are all two cell sandwich fillings and I'm going to color those in just so I can keep track of, keep track of that. Ah, I have this one is 30. So this is 31 or 32 now. And we know that, ah, we know it's a six cell sandwich filling because we know that five cells, the maximum you get to is 30. So those six cells must be the sandwich filling here. And presumably it's not possible to get to 31 or 32 with, there's only one digit missing from this cage because this cage has eight cells. So there can't be a nine missing from it. That's absolutely ludicrous, isn't it? Seven, six, five, four, three, and two don't even get to 30. So no, there is definitely, there is definitely an eight in the sandwich filling and therefore there is definitely a nine in the boundary. Okay, we're starting to understand this. Now, one thing we need to watch out for with Under Beyond's puzzles is geometry. So when I get this sort of nine in either of these two yellow squares, my eyes are drawn to here and here. Neither of these yellow squares can contain a nine now, because if we try and put a nine here, for example, it rules out a nine from both of those cells, and we know that would be impossible. So I don't actually think that's useful here, but we need to keep an eye out for that. So if this is missing one digit, it must either have a one or a two in the cage. That is obviously true, it could have both. But if it... Okay, so if, it, if it's missing a one, if we're missing a one from this eight cell cage, then the cage will sum to 44. There would be a two in the cage, so the two would go to the perimeter. And we'd have 44 minus 11 is 33. That does not work. 33 cannot be a total for this cage um, because we know it's 31 or 32. So, so we know that there is a one in the cage. So we know this is a one nine pair. That is nice. So this is a one nine pair. Ah, okay, so if we know, if we know the sandwich filling is either 31 or 32, and we know that the sandwich crust adds to 10, we know the cage sums to 41 or 42, so we know it's missing either a 3 or a 4. Wow. <laughs> and there's a not a 1 in either of those squares, which is also useless. Right, so we're missing a three or a four from the dy cage. So that means we've got to put into it two, five, six, seven, and eight. They are all in there somewhere. And they, there is going to be a three or a four to join them. Ah. Ah, but look, now we can do some work with N. We can do Sudoku. I never like to start with Sudoku and these logical problems, but now we can do some Sudoku. Now, is it possible that N is one? Well, it's not, because if it's one, I have to put a one in one of those three squares. And the one in the DY cage is definitely not in those three squares. So that's not possible. N is two. The Y is one, N is two, Y is one. So now there must be a two in one of those three squares. So there's no two in those three squares. There must be a one look in one of those three squares. Huh. 
A... Bobbins, I'm stuck. I don't... That felt important, but I don't actually know what to do with it. I'm sure I'm missing something. Why you? So why is one now? So this is... Now that could be anything at all. This one, ND. ND is 23. And this is a seven cell cage. So 23, the minimum number we need is eight, seven, six, and one other. So we need a four cell sandwich here. So that's going to be the perimeter and then four cells, the perimeter and then four cells. So these three squares are definitely in the sandwich. Therefore, none of these three squares can be a one or a nine. <sighs> which I don't think is actually very helpful. Um, no, I'm not. Oh, hang on. Now look, I looked at R, B and O and we've concluded they are all a two cell sandwich filling. So R, B and O cannot be four, because if they were four, you can only make four with a one cell filling because you can't use one and three because then you'd have to have a number lower than one in the box. So these are not four. So one of United Arab Emirates is four. But which one? Uh, is there a way to tell? Not that I know. So we know that R, B and O are not four and they're not one, two and three. So they are five, six, seven, eight and nine. Ah, but O has got a two, three in its column. So O can't be five because if O was five, the only way you can make five down here with two cells would be with two and three because you need one to bound the sandwich. That's not possible if there's already a two and three in the column. In fact, six isn't possible either, is it? Because we'd have to use two, four for that. And that's not available because there's a two in the column. Ah, ah, of course. So seven, seven and eight are also not possible because of this two, three. That's really clever. Um, let's just show, show you why. If this is seven, how do I make two cells sum up to seven if I can't use two, five or three, four? Well, I can do it with one and six. But that, of course, gives me the problem that I have to put a number lower than one in the cage. And I can't do that. And it's the same problem with eight. Two, six and three, five are now ruled out as ways to get to eight. So I have to use one, seven. That's the same problem. So I think, I think this has to be a nine. That means those aren't nine, look. Oh, there's no nine in these squares. Because we know the nine is in one of the peripheral squares to dy. So nine, nine goes in there and we get a one, three, nine triple. Ah, and also look, we've got a one nine here and then one nines in this triumvirate. Now we know this square is a one or a nine. So there must be a one or a nine in one of those two squares, which actually we knew anyway. <laughs> That's completely useless. Um, Sorry, let's go back to this. So we've got a nine here and we know, ah, yeah, okay. So this, this sandwich total now can't be two, seven or three, six, and it can't use the one. So that's got to be four, five. And we know there must be a one in the boundary here because, yeah, because we can't have two or three. So we need a number lower than a four in this cage. And that the only option is a one. So we've now approximately placed one, two, three, four, and five, and nine in this. So R has got six, seven, and eight in it. Ah, and this square is R because it's a three cell cage. It needs to be surrounded by sandwich crusts. So R is six, seven, or eight, which, well, it removes five as an option. R is six, seven, or eight.
One of the things I love about Under Beyond's puzzles is not just that the logic is fantastic when you find it, but actually I find these puzzles incredibly enjoyable. I'm not exactly sure I understand why, beyond just saying that they are, you know, the logic is satisfying. Um, now, one's in one of these two squares. There's a two here now, look. So the D clue has got to have a one in it somewhere because it's got to have a number lower than the three. Sorry about this, I'm a bit stuck. Um, so can R be a high number? If R is eight, then we'd have to put a nine in this cage to bound it, but can this be a nine? I don't see why not actually. Um, it'd be very useful to know that this cell was the upper bound of the R cage. No, I don't see how to do that. Um, right, okay, so where do we look next? We've got this, I've got this two by two region here. Actually, this, this two by two region is a bit restricted, isn't it? Because these digits, ah, yeah, actually, This can't be a five. This can't be a five, because if it's a five, I'm gonna create a problem for this clue. Because the only way of making five work is with a two and a three. And now how on earth do I make a two cell sum add to six, seven, or eight, if I can't use two and three and I can't use one? Well, I can't, that's absolutely impossible. So this can't be a five. And I'm not convinced that's the end of the logic there, to be honest, because whatever I do here is incredibly constrained. If, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, look, I can't make these six and seven, because if I make them six and seven, then ha this sandwich filling would be two and four. What on earth do I put into them? to add up to seven here. I can't put anything because two, five isn't available, three, four isn't available, and I can't use one in the filling. So this is not six and seven, and therefore one of these two squares is an eight. So there's no eight in this box. So that the eight is down here in one of these three squares. Oh, look, if I could just get it, oh, Ah, oh, no, if I could get it here, then there would be a 6-7 pair there. Ah, so this is either 8-6 or 8-7. Let me just look at this. If this is 6-8, this would have to be 2-4. This now couldn't be 2, 6, so it would have to be 3, 5. So if this is 6, 8, you get 2, 3, 4, 5 as the options down here. If, on the other hand, this is 7, 8, ah, that's interesting. You can't use 2, 5 to make 7, because if you do, you, there's no way of making 8 work. So if this is 7, you have to use 3, 4. And then that has to be two six. Right. Ah, now that, is it good enough? Oh, yes, it is good enough. It is good enough because, oh my goodness me. Right, so we know these four squares now. Uh, let me undo, 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 undo. So in this position, we know these four squares, if this is six, eight, these four squares are two, three, four, and five. If this is seven, eight, these four squares are two, three, four, and six. Now there's a commonality there. 
they always contain 2, 3 and 4. Now the thing I think is most interesting here, although I'm spotting other things that are interesting as well, but there's an awful lot of interesting things about this, but let's concentrate on the thing I noticed before, which is there is definitely, undeniably, a 2 in one of these squares. And therefore, there is a 1 in one of these four squares, because it must bound the sandwich. And now we have, I, I don't know what we'll call this, it's sort of an X-wing with a long, you know, it's a virtual X-wing. We know there's a 1 in one of these yellow squares. We know there's a 1 in one of those two squares. So if we think about row 6 and row 9, is it possible there are any other 1s in these rows? Well, clearly not. You know, if we were to try and make this a 1, for example, the implication would be that this is a 1, and now I can't put a 1 in any of these yellow squares, and I can't bound a 2 that I know exists within them. So, this can't be a 1. This can't be a 1. That means there's a 1, 3 pair over here. Let's get that. That isn't, still isn't the interesting thing I saw. The interesting thing I saw is this. This now can't be a 1, so this has to be a 9. And that means that's a 1 over there. And there must be a 9 living in one of those cells. Oh, I thought this would be real, a real breakthrough. So there's now a 9 in one of these two squares. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm sure there's loads more we can do here. But isn't this a beautiful idea? These, this sort of virtual X-Wing? I mean, it's just it's stunning. 16 years old coming up with these ideas. Um, now, yeah, let, look, threes, look. We've got the same thing with, well, it's not the same thing, but it's a similar thing with threes. I know there's a three in one of those four squares. I know there's a three in one of those two squares. So where does the three go in row nine of the grid? It's got to be in one of those three squares. And in fact, it's got to be in one of those two squares. Fours as well. There must be a four over here. Oh, oh. Oh, and there's now there can't be a nine in the R cage. If there can't be a nine in the R cage, this can't be an eight anymore because I can't bound it with a nine. So this is not, R is not eight. Ah, R is not eight. So if R is not eight, B has to be eight. That sees that square look. Now there's, oh yeah, this is great. Now look, this eight rules an eight out from this square. I know there's an eight along this sandwich sum. So it must live in one of those two squares. Therefore, that can't be an eight. And as I know there's an eight in one of these squares, I now know that this square here is the lower boundary of this R. Because if I make this, um, if I make this six, seven, I can't put an eight or a nine in this square. The eight's here, the nine's here. So this has to be the higher boundary. It has to be seven. R is going to equal six. And now, now we definitely are cooking with gas because there is all sorts of things going on now. Let me just think about this for a second. So six here means these have to sum to six. So this has to be a two, four pair. That means there's a one in one of those two positions. Um, now, so that's not a two. This has to sum to eight without using two. So this now has to be three, five. So let's, let's put that in. That's three, five. That's not three. These aren't five. Ah, and this three five has to be bounded by a one or a two because there's a three in the in the, in the cage, and it can't be bounded by one because of the X wing, so it must be bounded by two, and the two can't go here because there's a two in this box. So this is a two. That's not a two. I don't feel like I've. Oh no, I haven't. I've still not. I can work this out, can't I? This is thirty one. So it's missing a four. There's a there's a three. I've got to put a three in this cage somewhere. Oh, yes, this is good. Because if I've got to put a three, 
The three can't go in those squares and it can't go here because of the threes. So the three lives in one of those two squares, but there was an eight in one of these squares as well. So there is no five. So this is a three, eight pair. Oops, three, eight pair. That means this is a three at the bottom. This, there's an eight in one of those two squares. Therefore, there's an eight at the bottom, look. That's the only place the eight can go. And now that must be the one. We need to bound the O clue. That forces the one down here. Um, this has to be a six, seven pair now. There's a seven here, so this is seven. This is six. Those two squares, we're gonna, I think we're gonna be able to get these, aren't we? Let me just uh, delete everything. What do we still need to put in this cage? We need to put in two and five. Yeah, so we do. Two, five. That must be at four. The A is four. A is four, I should put this in actually. R is six. B was eight, wasn't it? And we've still got to place, oh, I've got another one. O, of course, is nine. I've not been using this right-hand side at all. Um, so I've still got five and seven to put into those two squares. 31 minutes into the video, and I feel I've been doing quite decently today. Um, two, four, five into those squares. This, this R clue is basically used up now because this any of those digits are obviously the lower bound of this cage. Um, one, three, nine. Maybe we can just do more Sudoku actually. So this three, eight there. Ah, what's the next step? You know with under beyond it's going to be something fairly linear we're going to have to spot the next step he ex you know he expects us to get uh da, 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 da. what where are you fives look now in those squares so there must be a five in one of those three squares again that's not going to be the step that we're looking for Sixes must be in one of those three squares. Just doing a bit of Sudoku, trying to see if there's anything useful to be done there. Ones, no. Nines in one of these two, that looks okay. No, I'm not spotting it. So maybe this cage, let's have a think about this cage. This is a 23 cage. One, four, and nine. Ah, this square, this column is important, look. In this column, I've not placed one, four, and nine yet. Well, this has a one and a four in it already, so that's a nine. And that's massive, because that gives me a one and a four now. And that is massive, that is massive. And let me show you why. It's because, where do we put one in this box now? Well, one is locked into the um, into the ND cage, but one of the pencil mark ones is in a green cell, which I know has to be part of the sandwich and therefore cannot be a one. So this is the one. And we know there's a four cell sandwich at least to get to 23. So this cannot be the nine. The nine gets fixed. This has to be sandwich filling. These four squares have got to sum up to 23. Oh, without using a seven? Well, they've got to be eight, six, five, and four then. That's the only way of... Eight, six, five, and four is, is exactly the right number. So the six forces the six up there. These have got to be four, five, and eight. That fixes the three and the eight. That can't, that can't be a four or five, so that's a two. The four fixes the four, five. That four look fixes that that's got to be a five or an eight. Um, now I'm still looking, ah, I've got to place a one. 
I've got to place a 1 in row 4. It's got to go there. That's got to be a 9 then, I suppose. So that's a 3. That's a 9. This column needs a 7 and an 8. There's an 8 here. So we are actually doing really nicely now. 5 there. This square's got to be a 3, I think. There's a 3 that lives over in what, these two squares. Okay, so I'm sure there's lots of tidying up we can do now. Um, those squares there have got to be 6, 7 and 8 in some order. Ah, now they're all part of this cage, which is Y, U. So this is 15 or 17. Well, that can't. if there's a 6 in one of those squares, there can't be a 6 here, because that would be another 6 in the same cage. Ah, and the, right, so this is a 6. So these two squares have got to be 5 and 7, and... Ah, we can't put the, the 7 in the same cage as a 7, so that we can do this. This is 5, this is 7. Those three squares are 2, 3, and 9, I think. That can't be 9. Oh, 9's, look, 9's here and here. So the 9's in this box have got to be in one of those two cells. So that can't be 9 either. So this is 9. This is 2. Ah, this, this can't be 3 because there's already a 3 in the box. This is 2. And now this must be almost done now because... Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Because look, the 2 is the lowest digit I can put in this cage because I can't put 1 in it. So the 2 is the lower boundary and this has to add up to 15 or 17. So we've got 8. Yeah, so this has to be 15. This has to be 7. That's absolutely it's the only way I can get to one, a total that matters. Then that will be the 8 to bound it because the 9 doesn't bound it. This will be a 6. There's no 9 and there's no 1 in the YU cage, so there needs to be a 4, which must be that one. So, ah, the 4 gives me a 4, 8 here, look. 4, 8. That's got to be a 4 by Sudoku. Ah, and I suppose also I should complete the... So this was 15. That must be E is 7. E is 7. U is 5. We need 7 and 8 there. Yeah, it's, it's all going well. Famous last words, of course. Um, that's going to be a 4 by the looks of things. These squares have got to be 5 and 6. That's doable. So where should we look now? Ah, oh, we can do this column look. I still need to put a 5 in. That's got to go here. Now that's that's important look. Look at the D cage all of a sudden. The 7 is the highest digit in it. The 3 needs to be bounded, so it's got to look like this. That's going to dis that's going to disambiguate all these dominoes, isn't it? Oh, it's just stunning. It's just stunning. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um now, let's have a look down here. We need 7 and 9. That's doable. 9 must live here now. These squares are 1, 2 and 6, which we can fix. That's the 1 anyway. That's the 6. That's the 2. Those two squares are 6 and 8. Still looks like it's working. That should be a 3. And hopefully, if I haven't made an error, we're looking at 2 and 7. It looks good, doesn't it? And I think that that is how to solve Under Beyond's latest piece of genius. What a lovely puzzle. I'm just staring at it to see if I've, it looks like I've got one to nine in all of the boxes, rows, columns, etc. I think, I think it looks right. So fingers crossed it is. Um, I, will, <laughs> I will add an edit to the video if it proves not to be. Um, but yeah, loved it. Absolutely loved it. Let me know in the comments what you thought and do check out that Sudoku puzzle hunt. And see you next time on Cracking the Cryptic.